the eagerly awaited new Transalp has really shaken up the touring duo market. How close is it to its big sister, the Africa Twin? Is it even the better choice for some people? The Honda Transalp is often regarded as the little sister of the Honda Africa Twin. Before we get to the riding impressions, we'll let the facts speak for themselves in the next few minutes to give you an idea of how close this duel will be. With its four-stroke inline two-cylinder engine, which is fuel-injected and has a displacement of 755 cubic centimeters, the Transalp is the direct competitor to the Africa Twin with its four-stroke inline two-cylinder engine and 1,084 cubic centimeters displacement compared to the Transalp. The Africa Twin offers significantly more power with 105 Newton meters of torque at 6,250 RPM compared to the Transalp's 75 Newton meters of torque at 7,250 RPM. The Transalp's front suspension features a Showa upside-down telescopic fork with adjustable spring preload and a stanchion tube diameter of 43 millimeters, while a Showa monoshock with adjustable spring preload is used at the rear. The Africa Twin, on the other hand, has an upside-down telescopic fork from Showa with adjustable compression, spring preload and rebound damping and a stanchion tube diameter of 45 millimeters at the front and a monoshock from Showa with adjustable compression, spring preload and rebound damping at the rear. The spring travel of the Africa Twin is 230 millimeters at the front and 220 millimeters at the rear, which is significantly more than the 200 millimeters at the front and 190 millimeters at the rear of the Honda Transalp. In terms of brakes, the Transalp has a double disc with a diameter of 310 millimeters and a two-piston caliper from Nissan at the front, while a disc with a diameter of 256 millimeters and a single-piston caliper is fitted at the rear. The Africa Twin is equipped with double discs with a diameter of 310 millimeters and a four-piston caliper at the front and a disc with a diameter of 256 millimeters and a single-piston caliper at the rear. In terms of tires, both the Transalp and the Africa Twin use classic Enduro tires at the front, i.e. size 90-90-21 tires and size 150-70-18 tires at the rear. The wheelbase of the Honda Transalp is 1560 millimeters and the seat height is 850 millimeters. The Honda Africa Twin is slightly longer with a wheelbase of 1574 millimeters and offers seat height adjustment from 850 to 870 millimeters. In terms of tank capacity, the Transalp can hold 16.9 liters of fuel, while the Africa Twin has a tank capacity of 18.8 liters. In terms of weight, the Africa Twin, with a ready-to-ride weight of 226 kilograms, is significantly heavier than the Transalp, which weighs 208 kilograms. When weighed on the 1,000 PS scales with a full tank, the Big Sister weighs 232 kg, and the little one also weighs 211 kilograms. A difference of over 20 kilos is quite an announcement. The steep gradient and the tight hairpin bends that take the road up the wall as the locals call it, provide ideal test conditions for the brakes and suspension of the Honda Sisters. This is where the wheat is separated from the chaff. The four-piston anchors of the Africa Twin decelerate much more vehemently than the double-piston system of the Transalp. The feeling is intensified by the fact that the Twin, with its longer suspension travel, dives in more when you apply the brakes firmly. The modulation of both brakes can be described as exemplary. The activation of the hazard warning lights, intended as a safety feature, can lead to distraction for the rider behind when cornering at speed with corresponding deceleration values. On the road, the Africa Twin has the edge when it comes to braking, but this advantage is somewhat reduced off-road. The rear wheel ABS can be deactivated on both Touring and Duros. The anti-lock brake only works on the Africa Twin depending on the lean and on the suspension side. The Transalp does not come close to the Africa Twin. Neither the adjustment range nor the quality of the elements installed on the newcomer reach the level of its big sister. Here, the economy pencil has been applied in the truest sense of the word. 
The response of the Africa Twin Fork is much more sensitive, and despite the longer suspension travel, the transparency for the front wheel is at a really good level. It's a similar story with the shock absorbers. The rear end of the transalt moves noticeably, especially in fast corners with bumps. The shock tends to pump and the higher the rider's weight, the more noticeable this becomes. Riders of the Africa Twin are spared all of this as the 1100 confidently absorbs all bumps and irregularities. Even off-road, the larger Honda reaches its limits much later than the Transalp. This is partly due to the greater ground clearance and partly due to the much less suitable standing position on the Transalp. The riding position on both enduro bikes is very relaxed and thanks to the open knee angle, absolutely suitable for long distances. The Africa Twin offers more space overall and a wider handlebar, which makes it possible to maneuver and ride through tight bends with millimeter precision. It is definitely the most maneuverable large enduro on the market. The seat heights of the two enduro bikes are identical, with the Africa Twin offering an additional 2 cm higher seating position, which I recommend to all riders over 1.80 meters. There's reductions in terms of seat quality. The seat on the larger Honda is a challenge for the rider on longer stages and the fill-in cushion is tilted relatively far forward, meaning that comfort is also compromised in row two. When it comes to wind protection, the little sister outperforms her off-road oriented relatives. The windshield is significantly higher in the seating position, which is more integrated into the vehicle, means that large parts of the upper body are protected from the wind and weather on the Africa Twin. On the other hand, the rider sits upright and, depending on body height, unprotected in the wind. But the protection from below to the middle of the body is better than on the Transout. With the windshield from the Honda Original Accessories, you get the wind protection to an appropriate level as I have implemented on my Africa Twin Tune Up 2021. There are no options for adjusting the windshield on either bike. Riding in pairs is possible on both motorcycles. On the Africa Twin, 220 kilograms can be loaded, while on the Transalp, it is still 207 kilograms. As expected, the space in row two is somewhat more cramped on the smaller Honda than on its big sister. The peak power of the Transalp is only 10 HP less than that of the Africa Twin, but even the maximum torque shows a clear picture with 75 verses. 105 Newton meters, even more important in practice, however, is the speed level at which the values are obtained clearly noticeable in practice. The small dip in the torque curve between 3 and 4,000 RPM on the Transalp, the Africa Twin is incomparably powerful, especially from the basement. The Transalp shines with a linear power delivery and a smoother engine tuning and response. Only in sport mode does the touring enduro become more snappy. The perfectly tuned quick shifter, which puts the one in the Africa Twin in the shade, fits perfectly into the picture. There is a surcharge of around 300 euros for the automatic shifter, but the money is well invested. The Africa Twin and Transalp are also really well positioned in terms of sound. Both engines work with a 270 degree crank pin offset and blare wonderfully. Those who like customization will find what they are looking for with the Honda Touring Enduros. Numerous riding modes are available for off-road and on-road riding with the Africa Twin offering even more and more extensive customization options. The response of the Africa Twin in the asphalt modes is relatively sharp. I hardly ever use the tour mode. No other touring enduro bike on the market offers as much connectivity as the Africa Twin. The Transop doesn't come up to scratch here or only offers the normal basic connectivity, which allows you to connect your cell phone and motorcycle using the Honda app. Some riders generally reject the idea of connectivity on the motorcycle, as they do not want to be distracted from the essentials while in the saddle. The four display options are pleasing and the readability is exemplary. The positioning of the charging socket under the seat is worse than on the Africa Twin, which offers the USB port in the cockpit. A 12-volt socket in the cockpit is available as an option on both models. With the new Transalp, Honda has brought an accessible touring enduro onto the market that presents itself in many disciplines as a serious competitor to its big sister, the Africa Twin. However, if you are planning serious off-road adventures, the off-road legend Africa Twin is worth the effort relatively quickly. The Transalp lacks basic features such as handguards and engine protection or must be ordered as accessories. The standing position takes some getting used to and the suspension also reaches its limits on rough single trails. The big sister simply has everything even finer, especially the brakes. Suspension and connectivity are on a different level. 
The powerful 1100GC engine is also a real experience, even if it is rough in tour mode. Here, the Transalp offers a gentler counterpart in the form of the 750cc engine, which needs to be revved in order to deliver real power and is a little too long in the higher gears. Conclusion on the Honda CRF 1100 L Africa Twin 2023. For me, the Africa Twin is a touring enduro as a touring enduro should be. This was already true of the predecessor model and has not changed with the increase in displacement and power because, on the one hand, this remained manageable. At 102 horsepower, Honda even managed to shed a few kilos compared to the Africa Twin. So it retained its versatility and works just as well on the highway as it does off-road. The suspension absorbs pretty much all bumps. The engine remains confident in every situation, and the ergonomics and seating comfort are exemplary. A motorcycle for every day as well as for the long journey, wherever that may take you. Conclusion on the Honda XL750 Transalp 2023. The Transalp 2023 also manages the balancing act between different disciplines of motorcycling and shines wherever it doesn't get too extreme. Its greatest strengths are the accessible yet fun engine, its low weight, and the resulting easy handling. However, this accessibility and not forgetting the very low purchase price mean that the Transalp does not have the finest components on board. The soft suspension and brakes offer plenty of comfort and handle all moderate riding situations with ease, but merciless cornering or rough terrain are too much of a good thing. Added to this is the Japanese focus on safety, which means that the electronics are very cautious and conservative. However, the Transalp's task is not to win races or rallies, but to carry everyday riders and long-distance tours through the world with confidence. And it can do that. Only one thing hurts here. The lack of cruise control. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Stay connected and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.